The first electronic digital computer, completed in 1946, was named the ENIAC, an abbreviation of Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. It contained about 1,500 electromechanical relays and 18,000 vacuum tubes. In the newest models of many computers, there are no electromechanical relays and not a single vacuum tube. These computers make use of so-called solid state electronic components, semiconductor diodes and transistors. They provide for electron flow through solid substances rather than through vacuum or gases. Semiconductor diodes are made of metallic crystals, usually of germanium or silicon. They conduct current in one direction only. Transistors are also crystalline devices. They control current flow by a principle that resembles that of the triode vacuum tube. These devices offer many advantages over vacuum tubes and relays in size, reliability, ruggedness, power consumption, and operating temperatures. It is the purpose of this film to see how various logic element circuits operate to control the flow and processing of binary data. Let us consider diode circuits that function as AND and OR gates. You'll recall from a previous film that the logic AND gate has two or more inputs and a single output, and that when all inputs are binary ones, the output is one. Conversely, when any or all inputs are zero, output is zero. A positive voltage pulse can represent a binary one, and a no pulse, zero. If desirable, a negative pulse may be used for the one, with no pulse as zero. The designation must, of course, be used throughout the system. One and zero can be simply high and low, as long as the voltage difference is great enough for them to be considered opposites. The AND circuit is made up of two or more diodes and a resistor. The cathodes receive the circuit inputs. The anodes, counterparts of the plates in vacuum tubes, are connected to the resistor, which is returned to a relatively high voltage, say plus 100 volts. Plus 10 volts may be the high input voltage, binary one, and zero volts, the low binary zero. When both inputs are high, both diodes conduct, offering very little impedance to the electron flow. There is therefore almost no voltage drop across them. Most of it is across the resistor, making the voltage at the output point plus 10, high. Thus, the circuit meets the one and one inputs with a one output requirement for an AND gate. When both inputs are low, both diodes again conduct, and with almost no voltage across them, the output voltage will be low. This satisfies the zero and zero for a zero output requirement. Now let's see what happens when one input, either one, is high and the other low. The low input diode will conduct and drop the output point to the low voltage. This voltage on the anode of the high input diode will make it more negative than the cathode and therefore cause it to cut off. It therefore cannot raise the output voltage above low, thus it remains low. The requirement, zero and one inputs with a zero output, is thus satisfied. This type of circuit with positive bias on the diode anodes is known as a positive logic AND gate. The function of the OR gate is to act as a mixer or buffer. When there is a binary one on at least one of the inputs, the gate permits a binary one output. Zero inputs mean a zero output. 
The ore circuit, like that of the AND gate, is composed of two or more diodes and a resistor. Here, however, the cathodes are connected to the resistor, and it is returned to a negative voltage, say, minus 100 volts. This circuit is the exact opposite of the AND gate. The inputs, as before, may be plus 10 volts and zero volts, as high and low. When both inputs are high, both diodes conduct, and the voltage drop at the output point is high. With binary ones, then, as inputs, the output is one. Correct OR gate performance. When both inputs are low, both diodes again conduct, resulting in the low output. Binary zeros in, binary zero out, again correct. When one input is high, it conducts, and output is high. This voltage is on the cathode of the other diode, which has a low input. Its anode, with low voltage on it, is more negative than the cathode, and therefore cuts off the flow. This condition does not matter in an OR gate circuit, the rule being that with a binary one at any input, the output is one. One OR one input gives a one output. Let us now see how transistor circuits function as logic elements, first taking a general look at the key component, the transistor. It consists of three elements, an emitter, a base, and a collector. They are somewhat equivalent to the three elements of a triode vacuum tube. At the interfaces, there is diode type action which can be used to switch currents off and on. Symbolically, the transistor is shown this way. There are many types. The one commonly used in computers is known as a PNP type, positive, negative, positive. It requires a negative collector bias voltage. The emitter is grounded to zero potential. When a negative voltage is applied to the base, the resistance of the collector becomes extremely low. Consequently, there is current flow between the collector and the emitter. The effect, then, is that of a closed switch. When zero, or positive, voltage is applied to the base, the resistance at this interface is extremely high, and current flow virtually stops. The switch is open. Switching in this manner is the commonest use of transistors in computer logic circuitry. This is a typical transistor AND gate. The resistor is returned to a relatively high negative voltage. The base leads are the inputs. Output is taken at the resistor. Binary 1 is associated with a low negative voltage. And binary 0 with 0 or low positive voltage. When both inputs are negative, base and collector currents flow, and the transistors act as closed series switches. Output voltage is developed at the resistor. This satisfies the logic requirement, one and one inputs with a one output. If one or more inputs are zero volts or positive, Base current will not flow, nor will collector current. In effect, the switches are open. As a result, no output voltage will be developed. Thus, zero and one inputs give a zero output. Also, zero and zero inputs give a zero output. A typical transistor OR gate uses the same components, but the transistors here are in parallel with each other and in series with the collector resistor. 
parallel switches are a good analogy. Current flow in either base will result in output voltage. Thus, one and zero gives a one output. Current flow in both bases will also result in a one output. Thus, one and one gives a one output. Zero inputs, of course, result in zero output. Zero and zero gives zero. The inverter or not element, which changes a one or high to a zero or low, and vice versa, may be transistorized in this way with the use of three resistors. The collector resistor is negatively biased. The base resistor positively biased. And the emitter grounded to zero potential. The value of the base bias is such that when the input is low, that is zero or positive voltage, the base bias remains positive. Collector current does not flow, and output voltage becomes negative, high. Thus, a zero input becomes a one output. When the input is high, the negative voltage reverses the bias on the base, making it slightly negative. Base and collector currents then flow, and output drops to zero volts, which is low. Thus, a one input becomes a zero output. Now let us turn to the NOR gate. You'll recall that when the inputs are ones, output is zero. And that a one and a zero also result in zero output. Only when neither one input nor the other is one, that is, when both are zero, will there be an output. The NOR circuit resembles the inverter, but accommodates two inputs. Again, the values of the resistors determine the circuit's responses to inputs. When both inputs are binary ones, negative voltages in this case, base and collector currents flow and output drops to zero volts. Thus, one inputs give a zero output. If one input is one and the other zero, collector current will still flow, resulting again in zero output. Thus, one and zero inputs give a zero output. If both inputs are zero, the base is positively biased. Collector current does not flow, and output voltage becomes negative, high. Result, zero and zero inputs, a one output. It is possible to build a computer using only NOR type circuits to perform AND, OR, NOR, inverter, or any other necessary logic function merely by changing the circuit constants. We come next to the flip-flop. You'll recall that a flip-flop is a bistable element that is operated by pulses applied alternately to the set and reset inputs, producing alternately set and reset output signals. This is perhaps the simplest form of schematic for a flip-flop. Two PNP transistors and with two resistors negatively biased. Note that the bases and collectors are cross-connected. And the outputs are taken at the collector connections. The transistors will conduct alternately. If this transistor is conducting, its base must be slightly negative due to a set input pulse. As a result, its collector voltage is very nearly at ground potential. Since this collector is connected to the base of the other transistor, 
there is no inducement for this transistor to conduct. Because the condition of one transistor controls the condition of the other, the voltage at the set output remains stable. If a reset pulse is applied to the base of the non-conducting transistor in the negative direction, the transistor will conduct and will apply voltage to the first transistor. The change of voltage on its base will make it stop conducting. The outputs will switch over and remain stable even after the pulse is removed. If the pulse last given is repeated, there will be no change since the pulse voltage will not affect the polarity of the base. Outputs will continue to flip-flop as the inputs are alternated. Computers may contain additional logic element circuits. In this film, you have seen the most commonly used ones both diode and transistor operated. They are the basic building blocks of the computer. 